Hello, my name is Jason Hook. I'm a senior project manager in the technical services group at Global Graphics Software. Thank you for joining me for this presentation called OPC UA and Dashboards in Smart TFE. In the following slides and presentation, we will define some industry terms and then offer you three demos, including an ink delivery system, a piece of hardware that delivers ink to print heads and a SCADA application. We'll monitor a Harlequin Direct PC using OPC UA and visualize the data in a SCADA application. We'll monitor a Harlequin Direct PC using OPC UA again, but this time visualize the data in AWS SiteWise. The industry term OPC UA. OPC stands for Open Platform Communications, UA, Unified Architecture. Together, OPC UA. This is an open standard for exchanging information between industrial components. First developed in 1994 as OPC, sometimes referred to as OPC Classic. The protocol, the standard was redesigned and re-released in 2006 as OPC UA. UA was a rewrite, a design, a redesigned standard using the latest open standards. It is used to communicate with the factory across the internet. And because of that, it is secured by design, having full encryption and security standards built in. OPC UA is supported by 800 members of the OPC Foundation. It's been deployed to over 50 million devices worldwide and is supported by companies like Mitsubishi, Amazon, Microsoft, SAP, and Cisco. Sometimes another technology is, is talked about alongside OPC UA and, and that technology is MQTT, which stands for message queue telemetry transport. Whilst we will be integrating MT, MQTT into our products where it makes sense, we won't be talking about it very much in this presentation. Another industry term or two terms, actually OPC UA server and OPC UA client in this slide and in the middle of the picture. We can see a screenshot of our smart print controller software. It contains both an OPC UA client and an OPC UA server. The client can communicate in both directions with PLCs, both reading and writing, and it can display device specific information like the ink levels, ink, inkjet head temperatures, and so on. The OPC UA server within the smart print controller allows the printer to appear as a single device to the smart factory OPC clients. It can publish data to the outside world and the smart factory, including Amazon web services and Microsoft's Azure IOT platform. Another industry term, SCADA. SCADA stands for supervisory control and data acquisition. SCADA allows you to supervise and monitor and control industrial processes, both locally and remotely. The dashboards created in the SCADA system can be viewed from a browser on any device. In our case, we're not connecting to a PLC, which would be the brains of production line, but we are connecting to other devices directly. We're going to show both current values and historical values from devices via OPC UA in the SCADA application. We are currently, for the purposes of this presentation, using the Ignition software or SCADA application by inductive automation. There are other vendors. Once you have an OPC UA server in your environment collecting data, you can publish this data to industrial cloud services like AWS SiteWise and Microsoft's IoT platform on Azure. By sharing and storing data in the cloud, you can leverage opportunities to use machine learning and artificial intelligence to analyze the data. This allows you to do predictive maintenance and optimize your industrial components based on the data and the analysis. No programming is required to make this connection uh, because all of the work is done via a web browser. Although some firewall and networking um, adjustments may need to be made. Data collected in this way is visualized in graphs and charts via a web browser, 
And we'll show you an example of an industrial cloud service in the demonstration that follows. A final industry term, Smart DFE. The Smart DFE is an OPC UA enabled printer controller. In this slide and in the diagram, you can see the Smart Print Controller or SPC on the left hand side of the, the slide. The SPC controls a number of distributed Harlequin Direct RIPs. You can see a very fast single pass system with one Harlequin Direct PC per print bar. The SPC distributes the PDF out to the Harlequin Directs and they then rip, screen and stream the data to the print head driver electronics in real time. The Harlequin Direct PC at the bottom is streaming the same print data to a quality inspection vision system. To keep up with the fastest presses, our Harlequin Direct PCs must be running at the optimum level for every job. We can use an OPC UA server to monitor each of the Harlequin Direct PCs, and we will show that kind of data in one or two of the demos. Shown on the right of each bar is the ink delivery system for each ink color. Their job is to pump the ink around to the ink jet heads and keep it at the ideal temperature. We're going to show an OPC UA enabled ink delivery system in one of our demos. In this demo, we feature an ink delivery system. It's connected to an OPC UA server that is in turn connected to a ink delivery system. The OPC UA server is running on a Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is taking proprietary data from an APS serial interface and exposing that data as a series of OPC UA tags. The data that's available for collection is summarized in the application in our slide at the top middle part of the screen. We've enhanced our SCADA application by allowing us to turn the machine off and on, uh, open and close valves, change the temperature of the heater and so on. We can control the device remotely via SCADA. We'll show in the demo the recording of historical data in the form of a graph. The data that's produced by the ink delivery system is collected by our SCADA software and it allows us to interact with the system and view the system remotely. In a real system, there would be a number of ink delivery systems, but for purposes of our demo, we'll be featuring just one. In this demonstration, we're looking at an in ink delivery system, which is connected to an OPC UA server running on a Raspberry Pi. And we're receiving information about the ink delivery system in the SCADA application, which is displayed in the web page on the left-hand side of the screen. Data is coming from the ink delivery system and being displayed currently in the form of gauges and graphs. And where we're using graphs, data is being recorded separately in a database and can be retrieved later for, for further use. We have bi-directional control of the ink delivery system allowing us to use the buttons that we've designed into the application to turn the machine on, to open and close valves and, and affect the temperature of the heater. Some static data is available in terms of the machine name and the version. And we're receiving information from various parts of the ink delivery system, meniscus, flow pressure, temperature, ink temperature. And the data is coming back from the ink delivery system in real time. We have bi-directional communication between the SCADA application and the ink delivery system, which is going to allow us to turn the machine on. And we get feedback directly to that because the, the button has gone from off to on and to green. We can turn the valve on. The heater is turned on automatically because it's detected that the ink temperature is low. We can ask the heater to produce more heat and that will write a value to the OPC UA server and the OPC UA server will in turn over the serial interface, tell the ink delivery system what it needs to do. So 
Um, there's the SCADA application uh, working in real time, giving us immediate feedback about what's happening to the delivery system across the internet. In this next demo, we will connect to another OPC UA server. And this time it's the OPC UA server is, is monitoring a Harlequin direct PC. In the demo, we'll have a look at the SCADA application and add a little bit more data to it to give you an idea of how easy it is to uh, turn the data that's published by the OPC UA server into an application that you can view on a desktop machine or a web browser. In this demonstration, we'll take a look at a SCADA application that is connected to an OPC server running on a remote machine, a Harlequin Direct PC. And it's monitoring data about the performance of the machine, including how the CPU is being utilized, how much memory is being utilized, and some static information is being recovered about the machine name and its configuration. So the OPC server is running on the, the bottom right-hand corner of the screen that we're looking at. And that's on a remote machine, which is about 30 miles from where I'm currently sitting. The window above is, is a, a fairly common benchmarking program. And we're going to use that to stress the CPUs. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, I have a web browser open. And this web browser is running a SCADA or SCADA application that is connected to the OPC server that we're looking at on the right-hand side of the screen. We're recovering some static information like the computer name, how many processors are installed, how many cores, the cache, and some dynamic information. For example, the speed of the CPU at the moment and how it's being loaded. We're also having a look at how much uh, RAM is available at, uh, on the machine and how much is installed. There are graphs on the page that represent the memory usage and how the CPU is being used, both in total and the individual cores. The shades in the graph represent the individual cores. And I've, I've put cores zero to four on one graph and five to nine on the other graph. And so what we're going to do is just going to stress the CPU and see that data reflected in the graphs. It's worth saying actually that, um, the graphs themselves are storing data from the OPC server in a database, in this case, SQL Lite, but it could be SQL Server, or it could be MySQL, uh, it, it could be any uh, Oracle, for example. And so um, what we'll do now, so we'll stress the CPUs, we'll see the effect on the graph. So the tests are running and what we should see uh, is the, the individual cores being stressed and the overall utilization of the cores ramping up dramatically. And when the tests finish, they should ramp down. There shouldn't be very much effect on the amount of memory the machine is using. Uh, this is just the CPU intensive benchmark. You can see that the, the speed of the CPU is varying a little and the CPU, CPU load has risen dramatically. It will vary depending on the tests that are being conducted, but all the time, this data is being recorded in a database and that information can be extracted and analyzed. We'll let the tests run to completion, but what I think I'd like to do next is have a look at the, uh, under the hood, if you like, of this application and add a little bit of data to it and have a look again at the SCADA application. So as the tests finish, I will um, pause for a moment and we'll open the IDE and have a look at the application. As the test finished, we should see that the, uh, the diagrams, the graphs will reflect that the CPU is now no longer loaded as much as it, as it has been. And the individual cores will also um, ramp down. So that's the test over. And what we're going to do next is have a look at the SCADA application under the hood. So we're going to uh, have a look under the hood of this SCADA application and add some data. I just need to log in and open the designer client. Ink Delivery 2 is the project that we're working on.
and this is the designer client. The um, application is comprised mainly of views and those views contain components and those components are connected to OPC UA tags. The data from that comes from the OPC UA server. So the application we're going to modify here, or at least the part of the application we're going to modify here is the one that we've been looking at, which is the PC data from the Harlequin Direct PC. And so what I'm going to do is, um, is I'm going to add a piece of data to this page uh, and, and we'll take you step by step through doing that. This is the, on the right hand side here is, is the palette of, of components that we can drag and drop into this page. We have containers and we have charts, um, things that represent industrial components. We saw valves and pumps and switches and, um, there, there are things you can build a form from like the check boxes and, um, text boxes and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I, I like to use, um, containers for things. And I'm going to take one of these containers briefly and drop it onto the page here. And so, um, I'm going to briefly style it just to give it, um, uh, to keep it similar to the rest of the application. And I'm just going to give it a, um, just a border. So a solid border, um, with a little width and, um, color. Just like that. Okay. So now I want to add a component to that. And I, I think, um, in keeping with the rest of the application, I'm going to use an LED display. And so I can drag and drop the component onto my container and I can resize my container now. So making more of that control visible. Okay. I could take some time and style this component to make it look like the other LED displays on the screen. But what I will do, I think is I'll just leave it as it is and connect it up to the piece of data. So, uh, on the left-hand side of my designer, I have, um, built a tag library and the pieces of information I think I'd like is, um, I'd like to take the CPU time and connect it to this control over here. Uh, there, there are many ways to do it, but I'm just going to show you one. And, um, if I return to the properties pane over here on the right hand side with this component selected, I can click a little, um, binding icon on the left hand side, choose a tag to connect it to, and, um, we will see the data coming back from the application. So CPU time there. And you can see now that, um, data is coming back from from that OPC tag in real time. It's quite wide. We can do a transformation on this and make the number uh, smaller by dividing by a large number, but we'll just leave it just as it is. Um, and I'll save the application and we'll go back to the, we'll go back to the application in the web browser and we should see that control there. So here's my application and, um, it's detected a change. And if I choose to update it, we should see our new control on the page, uh, displaying that very large number. And that's, that's how simple it is to add data to your SCADA application from your OPC server, um, running on a Harlequin direct PC. In this final demo. We'll take a look at a Holoquin direct PC and its OPC UA server and connect that server to another endpoint. In this case, AWS Sitewise. We have a dashboard created, which takes data that's published by the OPC UA server and visualizes it in a series of graphs. This data could in fact be coming from multiple devices and sites into our cloud where we can use big data techniques to analyze the data, visualize the data 
and make recommendations based on it. In this demonstration, we are looking at AWS SiteWise. And uh, on the screen, I have a web browser showing an AWS SiteWise dashboard. On the right-hand side at the top, a utility that I'm going to use to uh, stress my CPUs, or actually my one CPU in multiple cores, and uh, below it, an OPC UA server, which is reading the performance counters of this machine and publishing them via OPC UA. And so AWS SiteWise is in direct communication with, with my machine and retrieving information about the performance of it. So if I run the utility now to stress my CPU, what we should see is a change in the way the visualizations dis are displaying data. Specifically, the, the graphs will trend upwards, the line graph will trend upwards. What I'm going to do also is edit this dashboard and add a bit of data to the, to the dashboard itself, add another visualization. I've done a lot of the administrative work already, deciding which tags that I want to monitor or, or, or save, store with Amazon SiteWise. And I'm going to pick one of the values that we don't already have and drag it and drop it onto the dashboard. And you'll see that the uh, visualization appears straight away. We can choose to see which, which kind of visualization we want to create, scatter graph, timeline, and so on. Um, I'm going to stick with uh, the line graph for the time being, and I can save the dashboard. And what we see there is the four original visualizations and the fifth available physical memory. And it, there is data there already because SiteWise has been storing data from my OPC UA server all the time, storing in the database for me to be able to analyze later. And there is a simple demonstration of OPC UA and Amazon SiteWise.